pull the ball out, and if you notice, this outside wind is, is spiraling. So look at it very carefully and just figure out which direction you would turn to tighten up that spiral. Uh, if you turn it the wrong direction, then you're really going to ruin the string, so make sure you think about this. But just try turning the ball. Um, in this case, it would be a left-hand turn. Turn it, let's say, a half or maybe a full turn. Hold it in that position and then retune the pitch. And sometimes that will just tighten up those windings enough so that you can save, your, save that string. Now the problem is, um, especially if it's in a brand new uh, set of strings, the problem is, is when they manufacture strings, they manufacture like thousands per day. D'Addario does 700,000 strings per day, orchestral and nylon and all kinds of stuff. Um, so if there is a problem with the winding, there will be a problem on like thousands of sets of strings. And so just going back to the store and buying a new set of strings may not solve the problem for you. So my recommendation is if you're going out on tour and you bought a fresh set of strings, give yourself at least a day of, of um, testing those strings before you take off. Uh, if there's a problem, then you want to be able to deal with it before you leave. And if you uh, pack like I do, everything's last minute and you're in a panic. Um, the last thing you need is a set of strings that uh, aren't going to be able to uh, make the gig. Um, lastly, bass strings are very stiff. And um, so, especially on the, uh, on the uh, larger strings, so when you first put them on, they're going to, there's an angle between the ball and the top of the saddle. And so the string is stiff and it's going to continue to rise above and gradually start heading towards the nut. And um, that's natural, that's normal, but that's not what you want when you, um, when you go to check your intonation or your action. So what I like to do is I like to take something flat. It can be anything, it can be a block of wood, it can be a piece of plastic, a piece of Lego. Just set it on the string and press behind and just put a little bit of a sharp bend. So what you're looking for is not a bend so far that it starts to head down to the pickups. You just want it to head perfectly straight from that point of contact right to the nut. And you'll have to do the same thing at the nut end as well. Just put something flat on that side of the nut and then just press down on the other side. It doesn't take a lot of pressure, maybe half a pound or less, maybe, uh, no that's a lot, uh, maybe 10 ounces. And, um, and uh, that should be enough. And uh, you'll notice that this, the string will drop in pitch, and that's a good thing because you've reduced some of the length. Um, just retune, and you'll notice that the tone is clearer, um, and uh, it, the harmonics are more pure that way. Um, okay, so fresh strings first, then tuning, then uh, setting the string at the uh, saddle and at the nut. And um, then we go on to truss rod. Now truss rods are one of those things that freak people out a little bit. So here's one that's been taken out of a neck. And what's going on is those strings, if you think of uh, a bow and arrow, when you pull on the uh, string of a bow, it bends, bends the bow. Um, that happens to your neck as well. So if I was to grab onto these strings, and just pull them in this direction, the whole neck would bend in this direction. And so the, the more tension you put in the strings, the more the neck wants to bend. Now inside the neck is a truss rod that puts the opposite tension on the neck. And it's, it's designed to counteract the fold of the strings. And why you want that is you want to be able to adjust that neck Ideally, it would be perfectly flat, but that wouldn't give you any room for the string to vibrate. You need a little bit of curve in the neck for the string to move up and down like this. And so by adjusting the truss rod, you can control just how straight that neck is. And I'm just going to over-tighten this one. So this would be inside the neck, and this would be counteracting the pull of the string. So I'll just pass that around and see what that looks like. Um, there are many different kinds of truss rods. This is one that we have made here in Saskatchewan, of course, by uh, Olsen Audio. This would be a more common truss rod. This would be uh, uh, made in Korea. You'd find this in Ibanez's and 
gosh, I don't know who else uses these. Um, but what's really interesting, Felipe mentioned how he can be in 40 below weather and then go into a gig into a warm environment and his bass is still in tune and the neck hasn't moved. One of the reasons is, and this was taught to us by uh, Glenn McDougall from Fury, one of the reasons is this style of rod. Um, this rod can move all on its own, it doesn't require the wood, and it can slip inside the neck a little bit. And so um, the temperature doesn't affect it the same way as, a, as the older style of truss rods, which actually clamp the neck at both ends, and as you're tightening the truss rod, it's squeezing the wood. Uh, these don't do that. Uh, these are independent of that, and, um, and they're very, very stable. Um, okay, so when you go to a truss, adjust your truss rod, especially on a brand new guitar, um, it's been held in there, there's maybe some glue in the channel, and you're going to hear what sounds like your neck breaking. Um, you're going to hear the glue uh, breaking loose, and so it'll be this, this cracking sound. If you haven't broken your guitar, all you've done is you've just loosened up some glue and that's okay. Um, but uh, if you adjust your truss rod, just do it a little bit of little amounts, like that much at a time, and then check. And then take the wrench out, put it back in, adjust maybe that much. Uh, you don't want to be cranking and cranking and cranking, or possibly you could pop your fingerboard off. Um, the, uh, the next thing is, a lot of these, uh, Truss rod nuts are made out of a relatively soft material, and to make up for that, they have a very deep um, channel for the, the uh, wrench to fit in. So make sure that when it goes in, it goes all the way to the back, so that you're uh, you're you're getting full engagement. And then you notice, just as I was putting it in, I had to wiggle it a little, little bit for it to get all the way in. So do that as well, wiggle it a little bit. Make sure that the truss rod wrench is a nice tight fit. Check that out, that's a really nice fit. If it's too loose, you run the risk of stripping the nut, and uh, fortunately that nut comes off, and you can replace it, but it would be a pain to get a new one. Um, there are some wrenches, or sorry, some truss rods where the uh, truss rod nut is not replaceable. So if you screw that up, you're either going to have to try and get it out, which could be a, um, a major piece of surgery, or replace your entire neck. It's not just a normal uh, Allen head screw? Yes and no. Um, on that one that I just passed around, the one that, that we make, yeah. um, it's a normal Allen head screw. Uh, you have to custom order. It's like an 836, oh, okay. uh, a fine pitch. Um, and we use it for that purpose, so that if you do strip it, it's like a 50 it's cent part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, these are custom made. And sometimes you can find them at, at music stores if, if they've got a, a box of parts. Chances are not. So you'd have to go back to the manufacturer. Hopefully they have stock um, and they can send it to you. Now you're talking you know, weeks to a month. To get so it your thread is National 5? It's not metric? Uh, on our Canadian made rods, it's a National 5, yes. And, but typically, almost all truss rod nets are, are metric these days. Now that you mentioned that, um, yes and no. This is a metric um, key, but it's a 1032 thread. Uh, so even though it's made in, in Korea, they use imperial uh, threads. And as I think about it further, that's a four millimeter wrench, which corresponds to five sixty fourths. So there is some effort to be compatible in both uh, imperial and metric. Yeah, that's sloppy in there. Oh. You it's it's, that off pretty easy. it's a little bit sloppy, yeah. And they, they make up like the if you didn't have it plugged in all the way. Yeah, totally. If you only got it halfway in. It was in. only in the end there, boy. Yeah. Um, now, I only know of one base where, where it uses a left hand thread. So when you're tightening the truss rod, it's always a right hand thread uh, going in a clockwise direction. Um, for whatever reason, padulas are opposite to that, and uh, so you're actually loosening it to tighten it up. Um, okay, so the basic steps for, for checking your setup is tuning first, then check your truss rod, 
and then check the nut. Now the nut isn't something that's user serviceable. You'd have to bring it into Kalen here to, to have them adjust it. Um, but it's one of those things that you really only have to do once and then you wear it out and then you replace it. Um, and the way to check your nut is play the open string. It's not buzzing so we can assume if the truss rod is set properly and it's not buzzing on the open string then the nut is either at the right height or it's too high. If it's buzzing on the open string, but it's not buzzing on the first fret, that means the nut is actually lower than the first fret and it needs to be replaced. So, clean on the first fret, buzzing on the open, it's time to replace the nut. If it's clean on the nut, clean on the first fret, then the next step is to see if it's, if it's uh, too high. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. One is just to take a tuner and You guys see that display? Mm -hmm. Now, if the nut is the right height, when you tune the open and play the first fret, it should also be in tune. If the nut is too high, it's going to be stretching the string and your first fret will be a little bit sharp. And that's just because you're having to stretch the string down to the fret. You're having to stretch it down a bit anyways, but if the nut is higher than it should be, then you're having to overstretch that string. So um, a, a quick test is play the open, get it in tune, play the first fret, it should be in tune, the second fret should be in tune, the third fret should be in tune. Um, and then visually what you can do is you can just fret on either side of this fret here, the second fret, and there should be like the tiniest of gaps, maybe five, five thousandths of an inch. Move down one fret, and you should see at least that same gap, five thousandths or, or maybe ten at the most. It's not very much, and when Kalen goes to, uh, to adjust that nut, once he starts to get it close, he's got maybe five file strokes, and, uh, and the sixth one will take it too far. It's, it's really fussy uh, setting up the nut, but it's critical. Not only should it be the right height, but it should be the right shape. It should fit the string. And if it's too tight and you try and pull the string out of the nut, it won't come out. It'll, it'll hang on to the string and you'll hear this pop as it pulls out. And that's an indication that the nut's too tight. Another indication is when you go to tune, you hear this ping, ping, ping. That's more common on guitars than basses, but um, that also indicates that the nut's too tight and there's too much friction. So, tuning, truss rod, nut, and now we can go to the action. Now, uh, Felipe, can I, can I get you to come up here for a sec? There's a couple of ways to, to uh, think about where you should make your adjustments. So if you're laying the, the base on a table, and you adjust the truss rod, if you loosen the truss rod, I don't know if you can see this headstock. Can you see the headstock move up and down? Mm -hmm. Okay, so as you're t adding tension to the string, the headstock is going to move up. As you loosen the truss rod, it's going to move up. As you tighten the truss rod, it's going to start to move down. So you can actually think about that like you're raising the strings up and down. Um, and so as you're adjusting the truss rod, you're going to be affecting the buzzing in this area, not so much in this area. And as you're adjusting the saddles, you're going to be adjusting for buzz in this area, not so much in this area. So think of the truss rod as action at the nut, and think of the bridge as action at, at the uh, other end of the neck. So I'm just going to over tighten. Can I grab that, uh, that blue truss rod? Nice. So I'm going to over tighten this truss rod. Uh, just play in this area a little bit. Play relatively hard. So it's playing clean now. And then play up here. So it's playing clean across the entire deck. So I'm just going to quickly over tighten this truss rod.
goes a lot faster on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that wasn't much. Sir, try that. Let's see if you can make it buzz. I do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> this is why our bases are so expensive. It takes forever. <laughs> there we go. Thanks. I haven't heard no cracking yet. Yeah, unfortunately, no cracking. This is scary. Uh, <laughs> move this stuff around. It. Uh, everybody that comes into the. Sh everybody that starts work. You know, I can't even get involved. I'd say, just play as hard as you can in the. Uh tightening the truss rod until you start to get buzz in, in the lower frets. And that'll tell you that you've gone too straight. And then just by and give this one last try here. Just by loosening this up, let's say a quarter turn. There we go. Loosening it up a quarter turn. Adjust the truss rod as straight as possible until it starts to buzz, and then take it back a quarter turn, and you're set. And so that'll be the perfect that'll be the perfect truss rod setting for Felipe. Now some guys are going to play lighter than Felipe, so they can go straighter. Some guys play like that. Gary Willis, I don't even know if he touches the strings. I think he just waves his fingers in front of Ryan, him. or like Ryan, yeah. And then there are guys like uh, George Porter who play like that. So the harder you play, the more scoop you're going to need in the neck, the more, the higher the strings, the further the strings away from the fingerboard, you're going to need to have them. So the perfect truss rod setting is for your style. Yep. So now that we've got the truss rod adjusted for Felipe so that it doesn't buzz when he's playing, um, we go to this side of the neck, this end of the neck, and all that adjustment is happening at the bridge. Now, it, uh, what I'd recommend is have a piece of paper and a pen and start lowering your saddles, but count how far you're, how, how many turns you're doing. So start with half a turn on each screw, write it down. Um, if you get into trouble, at least you know how to get it back to where it was. Um, and it's the same process. You lower it until you start to get buzz in this area, and then you take it back up, let's say, half a turn. Um, each fingerboard has an arc to it, and the strings have to match that arc. And um, one of the th techniques that we use is it's, because it's so hard to measure accurately, we use just a visual guide. So if you hold the instrument at an angle where the lowest string is blocking your vision of all the rest of the strings, and then just start to turn the bass like this, you'll see the A string pop up over top of the E, and then, then as you rotate a little further, you'll see the D, and then you'll eventually see the G. And it should be a smooth, even arc, visually. We set uh, based on the top of the strings because that's what you're feeling. Um, other people will set the string height based on the bottom of the string, but because there's such a difference in uh, diameters of strings, that can really affect the, uh, the feel of your right hand. Um, so as far as action goes, um, that's one of those things that you can set 
with a ruler, um, and we do that at the shop. I would recommend taking it to someone like Kalen and have him do it for you, uh, because he's got the tools to be able to measure more accurately. Um, as far as maintaining the action, these saddles, they're a rat, they're a part that can tend to rattle down, so I would check every couple of months and just check to make sure that, that one of your strings hasn't fallen down, one of the saddles hasn't lowered, in which case you can adjust it back up and get it even with the rest of them. Is there any